If you're using the benefits of custom primitive data in your project to add variety to your meshes and to significantly reduce your draw calls, but then you generate your HLODs and it seems like all that information is lost, then you've come to the right place. I'll be going over step by step on how to fix this issue. This video also doubles as documentation for my open source plugin HLOD Utilities Extra. The link is in the description. You won't need this plugin for the solution, but there's some extra goodies in there. More on that later. Have you ever coded a feature that is already implemented? Me too, and I did it again this time. I was looking into fixing my issue with missing color in my HLODs and stumbled on just one forum post that had the exact same issue. This sent me down a rabbit hole, creating a tool to consider custom primitive data when generating HLODs. That tool is the plugin that I'm sharing today. I had all my talking points ready and everything, but then I dug more and I found a better existing solution. Turns out Unreal does consider primitive data when generating HLODs already. The tech was already there, I just needed to know that it existed. My missing link is called Per Instance Custom Data, and it contains all the data that we need. I just had to find out how the materials can read that data. Here are the steps to set up the materials. First, open up your materials that use custom primitive data. For this tutorial, I'm using an empty blueprint game project and the default map in Unreal Engine 5.5, which just came out. And I've added the starter content pack so we can use the chair for static mesh and the bush for foliage. First, let's update our materials. I'll change the two colors and roughness to be set on the instances as custom prim data. So in this tutorial, we're going to be setting the C color and the backing color. And we're going to select all of the instances and then set it to default, which is just pressing the back arrow, which is really nice. Here's how nice it is to be able to change the colors on the instances themselves and not have to create new material instances just for slight color changes. And I forgot to hook up a single custom prim data, so we will be using the specular for that. And we just have to make sure that we use the custom prim data and that we use the correct index. Let's go ahead and generate the HLODs. Sadness, their colors don't match at all. My assumptions about Unreal not considering custom data for HLOD generation was wrong. The code does generate an array of custom primitive data out of the prim custom data values. All we need to do is read it. Here they are. Search for custom data on your generated HLODs. It matches each instance's data. So for example, array at index zero, to three is the first instance's custom color for the seat. I'll also cover foliage as an example of ism or instance static mesh turning into HLODs. Let's go ahead and set up our foliage. So in this case, let's go ahead and add some foliage. In the content browser, search for bush and then add it to the foliage in the foliage mode. And we're going to set up a material to override so that the foliage will be using primitive data as well for its color. Okay, so here I just duplicated the material and I'm going to use it as a material override. And then we're going to make sure to just use a color for the color tint. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no opacity mask in the original texture. Uh, so the best I could do for now is just a multiply node. And that's what's that is what we're going to use as a custom primitive data. Okay, and let's go ahead and add a bunch of these instances to our world. So I'm just going to paint some bushes here. And so those will be ready for the data. Let's now read the data. Add the node called per instance custom data after your custom primitive data color node. Make sure to match up the indices, match up the index with the primitive data. So in the case of the color seats, we'll be using zero to three, and then the per instance cover custom data uses zero to two. And this way, the resulting mesh will work both as an instance and as a static mesh and the default value will work as well. This node will get its data from the per instance custom data. It will already know what index this instance is, and then it will just get the data in the array at this position times the index of the instance. 
And if this material is on the static mesh, so not an instance, then it will just get its data from the custom primitive data. And this one will just be passed through and there's no data in that array. In your material, make sure the flag used with instance mesh is enabled on your material so it will work on hlots. At the node vertex interpolator node, I tried with and without and even with some videos and information, I'm not too sure but it looks like it's performance related. Uh, all tutorials I found about per instance custom data were using this node. Please share in the comments if you know more. All right, so now we're ready to regenerate the HLODs. I don't know how many times I'll say HLODs in this video. The chairs look great now and get all the benefits of being batched and having custom data per instance. The next problem we have to address is that the foliage tint or color didn't work. Again, that's because it reads from the array, not the custom primitive data, which are both empty in the resulting component. If you have this problem and don't want to generate hundreds of array elements, you can use my plugin. Without my plugin, what you can do is generate the array. All you need is an array of data. Its size will be the amount of custom data you have defined in your material times the number of instances. So if I change this number to four, then it will generate this whole array for me. And now I can put the data in. Here's an example of a blueprint that I made to populate that array. It might be more useful as a UI editor tool, but this was a simpler implementation. I give it some colors to choose from, and the array gets populated with a random assortment of those colors. I then copy over the array to my foliage array of custom data, and it's ready to go. So once that data is inside the foliage instances, now we can generate the HLODs. We'll see that the foliage has all the info working. As a side note, per instance data is great for foliage. You'll need less material instances. You can have more color variety and fine tune every single instance. I just wish that there was an easier way to set per instance custom data on foliage or already instance mesh components other than in this gigantic array. Maybe there's already a tool or workflow for it. I don't know it yet. If you do, please share in the comments. For an alternate solution, with my plugin, we can use an HLOD modifier to generate the needed array from the custom data info. So go ahead and go back to the instances, delete the array data, set the custom amount to zero, then set a color in the custom primitive data that you want all of your foliage instances to use. This HLOD modifier will just make it so that you don't have to make a huge array for just one copied value. So to get that functionality, go ahead and download my plugin at the link in the description. If you're using Unreal 5.4, you can use the 5.4 branch plugin. Extract and copy paste the plugin into your project's plugins folder. If you don't already have a plugins folder, you can just add one. So this should work for a blueprint project and code projects since I, I did provide the binaries. So my code contains a new HLOB modifier which disables world position offset. And if there's some hierarchical instance meshes like foliage and per instance custom data array is empty, so you haven't defined the, the values for your array and its custom primitive data is not empty, what my plugin does is that it just populates the resulting per instance custom data array so that you don't have to. The reason why I added the logic to disable world position offset in generated HLEDs is that some of my static meshes were using world position offset and that became a problem in the, the HLED that it generated. I had some floating weird shapes in the sky just looking like waves or ghosts, I'm not sure. Uh, so that's why I added that option. To apply that HLOD modifier, all you need to do is add it into your HLOD layer. So go ahead and navigate to your world setting, then open up your HLOD layer, and then just add the HLOD modifier no WPO, and then you can regenerate your HLODs. If the problem isn't fixed, you can just delete your HLODs and then build them again. Your foliage should be all good now. So we see that the original has just custom primitive data and the generated HLOD has a fully populated per instance custom data array. On that note, for potential future plugin improvement, my code doesn't actually 
update on the instance itself, it just updates the hlot to have that array. Uh, so this may cause the hlots to regenerate because of that difference. So there's definitely some improvements that could be made there and you are definitely welcome to improve my code. A silver lining to finding a better existing solution is that I wasn't comfortable sharing a plugin with that much code and especially that it might be outdated right away, especially with 5.5 on the horizon. Even though it took me some time to get over losing all of this time preparing for the video, iterating the plugin, in the end, it was worth it from the learning I did about HLOT builders. If you're looking into that, I'm happy to have shared the code and its history because I found little information on the subject of implementing and using custom HLOT builders. This is where you choose your class if you wanted to do that. You can find my previous plugin solution in the history of my GitHub repo at this commit. It can help you customize how your HLOD layers builds its HLODs. My example user case is that I had created an HLOD builder that changed the way it grouped or clustered meshes into hierarchical instance static mesh components to consider custom primitive data. It wasn't the most optimized way of grouping the data because it created more instance components. There was less instancing gains to be had. But yeah, I'm glad my video can be useful as a reference, not as a new way of doing things. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. Less code is always better. Another lesson I relearned is to not assume Unreal hasn't implemented what you're trying to do. Go with Unreal and Unreal will go with you or some other inspirational quote. I'll share a few per instance data video references in the description that were very helpful. And if you're interested in more tips and tricks about setting up your HLODs, watch this next video or whatever YouTube recommends here. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you so much, patrons, and see you in the next one.